Had several recent requests to cover the Steak and Shake franchise on the channel here. Thank you for those requests. Steak and Shake has a new franchise model where for only $10,000 you can own your own franchise location. But is this deal too good to be true? We're going to look at that today on Franchise City. So Steak and Shake, it's a big name. They've been around a long time. First one was opened up in 1934 by a gentleman by the name of Gus Belt. As of last year, they had just over 600 locations. Just over 400 of those are corporately owned. About 200 of those are owned by franchisees. Now Steak and Shake, as you probably know, most famous for their steak burger. Originally, they used to make these from T-bone, sirloin, and round steaks. And back in the day, they would actually grind these up in front of customers and make them into burgers. Of course, that no longer is the case today. So here is the deal. This is offered right on the Steak and Shake website, and you might have seen this on some of the windows in your town on the location. So for an investment of $10,000, selected franchisees, who we call franchise partners, are granted the rights necessary to operate a franchised Steak and Shake restaurant business. This opportunity requires that the individual be free of any other active business ventures and operate the restaurant on a full-time, hands-on basis. So you're going to be hands-on there every single day making things happen, so this is a full-time gig. Steak and Shake franchise partners must successfully complete an extensive multi-week training program prior to taking over operations of a franchise Steak and Shake restaurant business. With robust franchise support available, Steak and Shake franchise partners are equipped to handle decisions and reap the rewards of achieving the American dream. As a franchise partner, you oversee all aspects of a 24-hour restaurant, ensure that our patrons are served the highest quality burgers and shakes, along with extending them great service, are a hands-on leader, are a results-oriented self-starter, have a servant heart committed to improving the lives of others. Now, interestingly, in the Chick-fil-A franchise interview process, one of the questions asked is, what does having a servant's heart mean to you, and it looks like Steak and Shake is trying to borrow a lot from the Chick-fil-A playbook. We're going to speak on that a little more later. The opportunity, become a franchise partner with minimal investment, earn 50% of franchise profits, guaranteed minimum $100,000 in your first year. Now, it's easy to let your emotions guide you with visions of earning millions of dollars, owning your own restaurant with this famous chain. Let's slow down a little bit and look at some reasons that Steak and Shake might not be a dream come true. So the first reason is the company's financial troubles. So Steak and Shake changed hands a few times since the original founder Gus passed away. Ultimately, the company was sold to Big Larry Holdings in 2008. They also own the Steakhouse Western Sizzlin, uh, Maxim Men's Magazine, they own that few other companies, as well as about 15% of the shares in Cracker Barrel. Now, when Big Larry first took over Steak and Shake, the company had been losing money for the past three and a half years. They were losing about $100,000 a day. He made sweeping changes, and for a period, it looked like Steak and Shake was on the right track and back towards profitability, but that success was short-lived. Now, this year, Steak and Shake had almost a $19 million operating loss in the first three months of the year. They lost almost $11 million in 2018, and this can be attributed directly to the fact that customer visits are down 13%. Over the last three years, 7.7% just in the first three months of 2019. Also important to note is that Steak and Shake has a loan payment of $184 million. That's due in March of 2021. And some outlets, as we can see here, they're suggesting Steak and Shake may not be around in the next few years and that they may not make it. Now, hidden in their disclosure documentation is this paragraph in tiny little print among the hundreds of pages. It's very revealing. It states, we decided to close 101 company operated units, which are being designated for franchise partners. Our plan is for these company operated units to reopen under new franchise partner ownership. So let me ask you this. Do you think if these stores were making money, they would just close the doors. So keep in mind, chances are you're going to be walking into a store that's been closed. 
that's going to be very hard to bring back to life. But that actually might be a better scenario than Stake and Shake continuing to drive these locations into the ground, which it appears that they have been doing. And that brings us to the next topic, which is their PR problems. So it's no secret that customer sentiment towards Stake and Shake is at an all time low. Yelp has a one and a half star rating. Their own Facebook page has a 1.9 star rating. TripAdvisor has a majority of terrible ratings, the lowest possible score. And let me ask you this, do people check these ratings before they go out and eat somewhere? Do you check the ratings online before going out anywhere? We all do. And the majority of these ratings tie back directly to customer service. If you read through some of these comments, everything is tying back to the customer experience. Now, the, the question is whether a brand new owner, potentially you, possibly with zero food experience, maybe no customer service experience or business turnaround experience, are going to be able to do what these experienced managers who were in place were unable to do. Now, it is possible if it is your own store, that if you had the support from head office, the training, all of these other things, that it could be done. But if history is an indicator of the future, Stake and Shake has not been giving people the most supportive environment. And that brings us to number three, which is their legal problems. So recently, Stake and Shake lost a $7.7 .7 million lawsuit by not paying their managers overtime. So the chain they required these managers often to work 50 or more hours per week, performing what they called non-managerial tasks. I don't know if that's cleaning toilets or what it is. Uh, the company didn't pay them overtime claiming, no, 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 these managers are exempt. Managers sued, managers won, and that lawsuit also alleged that corporate was not providing support services that they needed, like fixing mistakes on the website and on the menus, not notifying uh, franchisees and managers of customer complaints. So I hope you're getting a clearer picture of the environment as it stands now that you'd be walking into. Closed stores, bad reviews, non-existent support, that's going to be very frustrating if it's not something that's changed in the organization. Now keep in mind that this was just a regional lawsuit involving some managers in the St. Louis area. There's a similar class action lawsuit that's still pending involving over 1,000 store managers that have sued, sued uh, Steak and Shake. Stay tuned for that one. And number four are the culture problems. And shareholders in Steak and Shake, they've openly voiced they have an issue with how the CEO, Mr. Biglari, is running the business. And allegedly, one of the main solutions that he suggested to turn the business around is a new milkshake making process. And another suggestion was just removing the cherries from the milkshakes. That could save the company a million dollars a year. Now, another idea that has come up with, and that's the reason you're watching this video, is to sell off these distressed corporately owned locations to people like you. Now, despite losing money, Mr. Biglari's total pay package as CEO was allegedly almost $32 million. His CEO pay was $900,000, but the way that he structured the company, Steak and Shake also paid $31.6 million in incentives to Biglari Capital, of which he is the sole owner. So the overall plan here, obviously, is to try and replicate the very successful Chick-fil-A model where franchisees pay only $10,000 and can run their own store for a share in the profits. But Steak and Shake, they're not Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A is successful not because they sell franchises for $10,000, but because they have a phenomenal culture that's built around customer service and employee manager respect that's why their stores are at the top of the QSR 50. Their earnings per store are over $4 million a year. Steak and Shake, they'd have to completely change that culture, repair their negative PR, and it doesn't seem that they really have a handle on what needs to be done to turn things around. It's going to take a lot more than just taking cherries off or a new shake making process, in my opinion. But you might be saying to yourself, what do I care? I'm going to pay $10,000. They're going to pay me $100,000 first year. What could go wrong? Well, if you check in the agreement, which we did, you're going to pay the $10,000 before you start training. 
if you fail the training, you don't get the franchise and you're out several months, we'll cover that in a moment, and you're only going to get half your money back. Steak and Shake is going to keep half to cover your training costs, which is not crazy. Now, if you do pass, that $10,000 goes towards your franchise. Now, keep in mind, the company's management development program, that's going to take between 8 to 14 weeks for you to complete. Next step is the in-store execution training. That's 6 to 8 months. And I'm quoting now directly from their agreement. The candidate shall be responsible for the costs of traveling, living, and other expenses incurred during the initial training program. Candidate shall not receive any monetary compensation or other form of remuneration during the term of this agreement. So you're apparently not getting anything during that time of training. And you might say, so what, Robert? I'm a smart person. I'm going to pass that training. I'm going to open that store. I'll do whatever it takes to turn that store around. I'm going to have customers raving about my store, wanting to visit my store, and my store is going to be the greatest of all steak and shakes ever. Just one problem. It isn't your store. And sure, you're going to take on all the responsibilities of the store, the legal liability, the leases. You're even obligated to purchase or lease any new equipment that's required in the store in the future. But you do not own any equity in the store ever. So in the best case scenario, you're a glorified manager of a great store that you've turned around, but you're not building a saleable asset. You're not really going to benefit from the turnaround that you managed to pull off. Now, additionally, in the terms and renewal portion of the contract, you're going to find this clause. Notwithstanding anything to the contrary contained in this agreement, franchisor, in the exercise of its sole discretion, may not renew this agreement giving written notice to franchisee at least 30 days prior to the end of the then current term without any further obligation or liability to franchisee. If any one or more of the following events or circumstances should occur with respect to the franchisee. And there's several scenarios in there that allow Steak and Shake to terminate your contract in certain situations for that store that you've worked so hard to turn around. But now, Robert, you say, I'll always be in compliance of the agreement, and I trust them never to get rid of me. I'm just that good. Well, in Section D of this same page, it states, Franchisor shall have the right to change any terms and conditions of this agreement upon such a renewal by giving franchisee a written notice of such changed terms and conditions at least 45 days prior to the end of the then current term, in which case franchisee shall have 15 days from the date of such notice to decide whether to renew upon the terms if offered and to notify franchisor in writing of franchisee's decision to either renew upon the terms offered or as applicable not to renew upon the terms offered. So basically in a whole lot of very boring and dry language, Steak and Shake can change any of the terms and conditions at any time in the contract and you can either accept what they're proposing to you or you could walk away. So if you have put in all this equity, all this time and turned this store around, technically they can change the rules of the game at any time. That's going to be tough. So is it possible that your training goes well, you manage to turn your store around, all the other owners turn their stores around, the culture of Steak and Shake changes, the online reviews all start to trend upward then Steak and Shake are so appreciative. They're going to keep all the owners on. They're going to keep paying them all this money and everybody lives happily ever after. Now that, of course, would be wonderful if that happened, but is it realistic? I don't know. That's your business decision to make. Now that you're armed with the background story and the situation, you can make an educated decision. And I know we're often perceived as negative in these videos. We're not negative. We've got dozens of positive videos as well on the channel, interviews, all sorts of things. Every one of us here owns businesses and owns franchises. There's always challenges in any business, but being aware of those challenges and being confident you can overcome them is the key. Once you've got both sides of the story, you can make an educated decision, not one that's just based on emotion of making these millions of dollars in this store without any issues. And whether your decision is to join Steak and Shake or start another business, just get out there and make things happen. Please like and subscribe, hit that bell for updates, and thank you very much for watching.